nothing is impossible with God. Salvation through Jesus and Mary. Dear friends, this fourth Sunday of Advent is just a few days before Christmas where we will celebrate the coming of the light of God, Jesus Christ, the Emmanuel, God with us, in us and among us. As noted in John chapter 1 verses 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The God who was seen to be far away from his people is now close and directly accessible. God is tangible to all his children thanks to the immense love and mediation of Jesus Christ and thanks to the yes or collaboration of Mary. As we light the fourth candle of Advent, we ask ourselves as to whether the fire of God's hope, the fire of God's love, joy and the fire of God's peace is increasing and burning in us as we spread it with others or we are putting it off. Advent is connected to Christmas because it is an opportunity to celebrate Christ who came to save us, who comes every moment to liberate us and to heal us and Christ, who will come again at the end of time to reward us if we continue loving others as God loves us and as we love ourselves. So as we prepare ourselves throughout this Advent, we bear in mind that Christmas, which we are preparing for, that Christmas we are to celebrate very soon, means God decides to come among us. Christmas means God makes his home with us, in us. Christmas means God lives with us and in us. God accompanies us and shares our joys and our struggles. It's enough to remember what Jesus went through, his joyful, sorrowful, glorious life experiences with his passion, death, and the resurrection. He went through all this for our sake. We are also to share the joys and sorrows of others too, following the example of Christ. And Christmas Together with the journal of Advent reminds us that God eats with us, He nourishes us, and becomes a meal for us at the Eucharist. We are also to nourish others too, to nourish them physically, spiritually, mentally, to nourish them holistically or in all aspects. God pitched His tent among us in Bethlehem, and he, God continues to live with us in our homes, families. God continues to live with us in our apartments, our religious communities. God continues to live with us in our hospitals, schools, at work, and He continues to dwell within us. We are also to be a consoling, loving, and healing presence of God to all, especially the brokenhearted. Just as God is a consoling presence, thanks to Christ and Mary, to all of us. God in Christ pitched his tent among us, and we are not alone. God is with us in all circumstances, good or bad. Let us continue calling on him and working out everything with him always. I'm reminded of Psalm 127 verses 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the, watch, the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Yes, it is God who builds the house. It's God who builds our lives. It's God who sends the Savior. It is God who comes to Mary and through Mary gives us the Savior who gives us life and forgives us and grants us new life. Everything, dear friends, comes from God and everything returns to God. And today's first reading is from 2 Samuel, verses 7, 1 to 5, then 8b to 12, then 14a to 16. What a wonderful account of David and David's desire to build a house for the Lord. But does the Lord require the house? <laughs> we learn that God is the center of our lives and not us. On one hand, we can do nothing for God. Our, or even our prayers add nothing to his greatness. It is God who does everything in us and for us and with us and for each other. That should not stop us, therefore, from doing everything for God. Even though all we have comes from God, we can still return God's love by loving him through loving our neighbor. By listening to his word, we can return God's love by living a good moral life and by being a good and doing good to all always. Today's second reading from Romans chapter 16, verses 25 to 27, speaks of the mystery of salvation now revealed in Christ. 
God, our loving Father, always has our good in his mind and he's working out everything for our good and the good of all of us, his children. With humility and childlike confidence, let us continue narrating to God, God the Father, everything, even whatever seems impossible for us to handle now. In today's Gospel of Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38, Mary received the good news that she will be the mother of the Son of God, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. The mother of Jesus Christ, God himself. Mary was even wondering. Mary coming from a very poor, remote, insignificant and simple family, never dreamt of being the mother of a powerful God. Yet she was blessed, favored, and chosen to be the mother of Jesus and the mother of the followers of Christ, Christians or God's children. This shows how our God has power to transform our poor, insignificant, simple realities into great enriching experiences. Choosing Mary to bear Christ is an act of God's most profound love and mercy for all his children. God loves us so much that he chose Mary. Love and mercy are free gifts from God. Mary didn't merit these gifts. We don't even merit either of these gifts that we have. We receive all the gifts freely from God and we are to share them freely with others. God can do anything he wishes, whenever he wishes, and to whoever he wishes. In creating Mary, God did not keep her in him, to himself. He was not selfish with her. Our God is a generous God. He gave her to us as a mother of Christ and as our mother. We don't deserve such a mother, Mary, but we have her as a loving mother. She's always interceding for us, her children, bestowing many graces from God through her son upon us. Mary knew that she did not have what it takes to be a mother of God, but it was clear to her that it was God's will. It was God working through her, with her in her. Similarly, it is God working great things through us, with us, and in us, expecting our collaboration too, just as Mary did. Mary did her part very well and allowed herself to be used by God in his plan to save, to liberate, and heal his people. In our small or big choices or responsibilities, do we do our best too and let God do the rest or we do the minimum and even put out God from our plans? Mary knew how inadequate she was for the great gift and task given to her by God as a mother of Jesus. Her reactions showed up in her response to an angel, but her faith and trust in God prevailed higher. Knowing too that God is with her in her task, she courageously said to, she said her yes and was committed to her best, to do her best in the task which was entrusted to her as a mother of Jesus, even with her whole capacity, she couldn't do anything without God. She trusted God always. Only with the Lord, dear friends, can we too really be good and great and do good and great things only with the Lord. Looking into ourselves, what are the gifts that we have received from God? Do we allow God's spirit in us to inspire us and work in us so that we can achieve God's promise in us as Mary did? Like Mary, we are invited to always say yes to God and to do to be what God's word tells us because the words that the Lord speaks to us are spirit and are life for us and for others as John chapter 6 verses 63 says. Like Mary, if we commit to let God's spirit work in us as we continue doing our best, then the impossible will always be possible. We now highlight some aspects of the conversation between Mary and the angel Gabriel. Mary listens. This is the first aspect. Mary listens. The angel announces that the Messiah will be born in Mary and she listens. Her greatness comes through her faithful listening. Mary listens, asks for clarifications and finally accepts to be the servant of the Lord. Dear friends, do we listen to the voice of our conscience deep in us which tells us to continue doing good and keep away from what is bad for us and for others? Do we listen to others, even the little and simple ones? Do we listen to situations in us and around us, even the most difficult ones? Every situation, dear friends, teaches us a lot if we listen and evaluate it. 
Do we seek clarifications as soon as possible from God through prayer and from others through constant dialogue when things are not clear? Let us always remember that when we delay to dialogue or communicate with the Lord and with each other, we start exaggerating things and making them mountains. Then we make small issues, which are sometimes like jokes or no issues, become big mountains and painful wounds, difficult to heal. Prayer in the first place is listening. In life, dear friends, we can ask questions to God and to each other, but the answers will always come through listening. If there are difficulties with members of our families, communities, husbands and wives, parents and children, friends, if there are difficulties, it is often because we do not know how to listen to each other. To, we do not know how to reflect and to pray in silence. We fear silence and prayer. Many times we even think that we are right and ready with our answers, but we have not yet understood the question of what exactly is happening in us and around us. The second aspect apart from listening is Mary accepts. Mary is deeply disturbed, yes, even by the initial greeting of the angel, but angel Gabriel showers her with assurance that everything will be all right. Do not be afraid. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Yes, our God is also telling us here and now, you and me, do not be afraid. These words of assurance brought Mary to turn her negative emotions into a humble, positive word of acceptance through the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit. The important word in this angel's words of assurance is overshadow. The power of the Most High will overshadow, will veil, will dominate, will conceal, will envelope, will cover you, Mary. Look compared Mary's body to the tent in which the Ark of the Covenant was kept. He compared Mary's womb in which Jesus will be housed in the womb of Mary. He compared Mary's womb to the Ark of the Covenant in which the tablets of the Ten Commandments with the Pentateuch, the Torah, in the Aaron's miraculous staff the, or the rod that sprouted to protect God's people and the gold jar of manna, food, manna, where all housed in the Ark of the Covenant in order to give life to God's people. The presence of Jesus in Mary's womb is like a presence of the Blessed Sacrament in the tabernacle. Mary's womb is like a tabernacle because Jesus is in the, in the tabernacle, body and blood. Mary's womb is like a tabernacle or at the Ark of the Covenant where the Lord is fully present. Thus, we, when God's power, dear friends, overshadows her, Mary, the Lord's presence fills her. He fills her. Similarly, God is present to us in different ways. God is present to us in creation, especially in the human person created in the image and likeness of God. God put something of himself into the creation, into us, just as the sculptor put something of himself in the masterpiece of art. God's thoughts, minds, Heart and soul are present to us in his word and the sacred scriptures, just as the sculptor's thoughts are present in the masterpiece of art. God is tangibly present to us in the body and blood, in the words and actions of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your presence with us and in us. Mary believes her faith was simple, humble, and deep. Hence, she first believes or trusts God, and only then she reasons out uh, everything. The angel said to her, Know that Elizabeth, her, your kinswoman, has conceived a son in her old age. She who was thought to be sterile, not giving birth, is now in her six months, for nothing is impossible with God. The striking words is the sentence, nothing is impossible with God. When we feel like giving up, when we feel we are lost, we have lost it all, when we feel like it's too late, that's the time that the Lord proves to us that he has power to turn the impossible into possible. Let's just trust him and entrust everything to him. What is it that appears impossible for us to handle right now? Is it sickness, stress, economic pressure, a spiritual, physical, moral crisis? What is, seems impossible? The Lord is here tonight, dear friends, to work out everything for our good, for the good of others. Let us continue trusting and entrusting everything to Him, throwing everything to Him, praying at all times, even when we feel dry in life. Let us allow Him to move in us and to heal us from within. But when God overshadowed Mary, 
And as she said yes, then God changed everything in her for our good. Even Mary didn't have hope of bearing the child, but she allowed and that's when miracles happened in her. And the last one is Mary obeys. Her obedience is risk-taking. When she says to the, Lord, to the angel, I am the handmaid of the Lord, let what you have said be done to me. She loves God and has trust in him and obeys. She kept saying yes to God as a mother until the end of the earthly life. God our Father, help us to always say yes to you and to listen, accept and obey you and love you every moment of our lives. Amen.